Last week I was running a VBA in Excel training course. If you're not familiar with VBA, it's Excel's built-in programming and automation language. Somebody asked if they could use VBA to look inside a folder on their computer, grab the names and sizes of the files in that folder and load that information into an Excel workbook. That was something that they had to do every week and at the moment they're doing it manually, copying and pasting from File Explorer. My reply was that it would be much easier to use Power Query and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. If you've never used Power Query or never heard of Power Query, in a nutshell it's a feature in Excel that lets you import data into Excel and once the data has been imported you can use the query editor to clean and transform the data. And all this can be done with no coding. Hence my suggestion to do it with Power Query rather than VBA. So here's a folder on my desktop. Although it doesn't have to be on my desktop, it could be anywhere on my computer. In that folder there's a number of text files of different sizes. I'm using text files because that's what my client was using but you can use any files. You can even have a mixture of file types, some text files, some word files, some Excel files for example. As I said the user has to do this process each week. For the demo I'll pretend it's done on a Friday. This is the data from last week. You can see that the file name matches the date that the process was done. I'm only interested in the file name and file size, so we'll ignore columns C, D, E and F. I'll start by deleting everything, including the headings. Then I'll click on Data, Get Data, From File, From Folder. I need to navigate to the folder, so I'll go to my desktop and double click on the folder called File Size Demo. It doesn't show you the names of the files in there, but that is the right folder. And click Open. A list of the files in that folder is displayed. I'll click on the Transform Data button at the bottom. And this opens the Query Editor. Power Query is usually used to import the content of the files into Excel, but on this occasion I want the file name and size. I'm not interested in the content. You can see the name is shown here, but by default the size isn't shown. However, if I scroll across to the right, there's a double headed arrow just to the right of the heading of the Attributes column. If I click on that double headed arrow, it will reveal a list of the file attributes. I'll untick Select All Columns and I will tick Size. If I needed to tick any of the other columns, I can do that, but I just want Size and then click on OK. The column, which it's named Attributes.Size, displays the size of each file in bytes. To convert the number to kilobytes, which is how it's normally displayed in the File Explorer in Windows, I need to divide the number of bytes by 1024. So with the Attributes.Size column selected, I'll click on Transform, Standard, Divide, type in 1024 in the value box and click OK. I'll also rename the column to File Size KB. And I can do that just by double clicking the column heading and typing in what I want File Size KB and pressing Enter. All of those decimal places make it look a bit messy. So with the File Size column selected, I'll click on Transform, Rounding, Round. And I'm going to set it to one decimal place and click OK. I then want to remove the columns that I don't need. I only want to keep the file size and the file name. So I click on Home, choose Columns, untick Select All Columns and tick Name and File Size and click OK. Next, 
I want to remove the extension from the file name. So to do that, with that column selected, I'll click Transform, Extract. Now Extract means keep, and I want to keep or retain everything before the full stop. So I'll click Text Before Delimiter. The delimiter is the full stop, and click OK. In the real world, the folder contains 31 files and my client needs the name and size for 18 of them. The file names don't change from week to week and it's the same 18 files each week, so that makes it easier. For the demo, I have five files and I'm going to include files one, three and five. So to do that, I'll click the drop down arrow to the right of the heading name and I will untick the ones that I don't want. So I don't want file two, I don't want file four, and click OK. On the right hand side of the query editor is the applied steps box. Each step represents an action that I've performed on the data. Behind the scenes, each step has an action associated with it. So for example, the action behind the step called source is the name of the folder that contains the files. I can check that by clicking on source, clicking on the cog wheel, and it will show me the settings behind that step, and then just click cancel. The action behind the step called divided column, if I select that and click the cog wheel, is the division calculation that I use to convert the bytes to kilobytes. I'll just click cancel on that and the action behind the step called removed other columns is to remove all the columns except name and file size. Now I've finished cleaning and transforming the data, I can close the query editor by selecting file, close and load to. If I choose close and load to, it gives me more options you will see on this dialog box, it gives me the option to put the data onto an existing worksheet or create a new sheet. Whereas if I'd chosen file, close and load from the query editor, it would automatically put the data onto a new sheet. So I'm going to choose existing worksheet. I'm going to leave it set to A1 and click OK. So what I'm left with is a table containing just the data that I need. Now I'm not going to worry about that queries and connections panel on the right hand side. I'm just going to close that down. In the real world, I would manually add back those headings that were in the original file in columns C through to F. But for the demo, there's no need to do that. So I will save the file and I will close it down. Now, here's the real time saver. Let's pretend it's the following week. I've made a copy of the Excel file and I've named it 29th of November, 2024. Let's also pretend that a new set of 31 files has been uploaded to the folder. The file names are the same as the previous week, but the file sizes are different. For the demo, I've changed the size of file one. It was, last week, 79 kilobytes, and now it's 235 kilobytes. So I will open up the Excel file, and this looks exactly the same as last week's file because it is a copy of it. I'll click on Data, Refresh All. Data Refresh All is a trigger that runs the query. The query is the list of steps that you just saw in the query editor. So essentially what I've done is I've automated a set of actions. I could have done that by creating a macro using VBA, but as you can see, it's much simpler using Power Query. Well, I hope the video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like more tips and tricks on Excel, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.